What up, y'all? It's Shay here, uh, back with a vlog series. Actually, I'm gonna show you like a day in the life for me today. Just doing routine errands. So it is the new year, so happy 2020. Hope you guys had a nice, safe, and happy holidays. And hope that you have a prosperous 2021 as well. Well, anyways, for today, as you can tell from my hair, it's super, super long. If I just go straight like this, it goes beyond my eyes. So today, I'm going to go for food, of course. As you know, it's a food channel. And I'm also going to get a haircut. So come along for the journey for that. And uh, as you can see, my mustache is kind of a little wispy here. So zoom in. I'm going to shave that off before I head out. And uh Come along, so stay tuned. So I'm in my washroom right now. So anyways, so I actually have a piece of paper right here. And what I'm going to eventually do is I'm going to just shave off this nose neighbor here. I don't want to look too uh, greasy for the new year. I'm just trying to do a complete like 180. Like there's long hair, the mustache. I mean like the new year 2020. Let's just put it behind us. So I'm gonna turn on this uh, shaver here. It's a trimmer actually. And they have like one for um, like spot treatment for like sideburns, I guess too, but not gonna utilize that. So boom, turn it on. And like I said, I have a piece of paper underneath. I'm not gonna put it in the sink just because I don't want that to clog. So. And there you have it, uh, clean shaven. I actually like mustaches, but for now, it's the new year, so ring it in, uh, just clean shaven. Don't wanna get caught off guard. But anyways, so stay tuned. We're gonna go uh, from Surrey to Vancouver, go for food, get a haircut, and uh, maybe take a look around and maybe buy something, I don't know. So today's my day off, so come along for the journey, guys. But yeah, clean shave. But yeah, I. No offense to like mustaches, I like them. I actually am trying to grow like a beard. Comment what you think it would be like if I grew a beard. But anyways, for now, keep it clean shaven. It is the new year and uh, come along for the journey. Stay tuned. Look at all that uh, hair. <laughs> yeah, it's not good to let this pile up in the uh, drain of the sink there, but uh, yeah. Shout out to my aunt. Actually, for Christmas, she had gifted me this uh, gift set here. You open it, boom. There is uh, some aftershave, some scented uh, deodorant stick, an atomizer, which is like a travel spray, and some uh, fresh cologne. So I'm actually just going to try and use some of this right now um, for some aftershave. Hey right, guys, so boom. It's going to be really hard to do this because I'm filming in one hand, so I think that would be enough. Hmm. Yeah, aftershave is typically worn uh, just so you don't get ingrown hairs, but that was a trimmer, so I don't think it has the same effect because when you use razor blades what happens is it cuts it so that it's like barely anything hair at the root but when you have like the uh, trimmer there's quite a substantial amount of hair left where it doesn't really have the probability of having 
the ingrown hair. So just imagine like this is the the root of the hair. I don't know the technical term for uh, the hair coming out of the follicle there, but when you have like the razor blade, it actually takes the hair uh, so that's this is the root like it has a little bit of like um space above it where it can like damage the follicle and the hair can just like go on a tangent but with the trimmer it's above the root so it doesn't have that problem so i just put it on my face was feeling a little dry but yeah a little side tangent so let's continue on i was walking in my neighborhood here it is january 3rd so as you can tell, there's no snow on the ground, no leaves on the trees, and this is very strange. Like everyone assumes that Canada is super cold during the winter time. This actually feels super warm. It's a little weird, actually. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to when the sun goes down, because the sun emits radiation heat energy and it kind of like isn't too too bad during the day but during the day it's manageable it's bearable but the moment it hits like 4 30 uh what goes on to happen is it gets really cold like there's a gust of wind can actually like feel like ice and so on and so forth so yeah just walking through the neighborhood gonna venture off to get a haircut maybe go shopping go for food just a typical day off for me but come along for the journey and yeah uh just taking a look at the views of the background like this is like canada where the houses are quite massive they're they can handle the elements so that's good and it's quite clean i would say although there's like a bunch of leaves on the ground here but I would say it's relatively clean, but yeah, stay tuned. And I'm trying to conserve my battery as well, just because full day of eating, just walking around, haircut and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I don't know how long the video of this camera, like the battery can last, but let's try and make sure it holds up for the remainder of the day. So stay tuned. You guys teleported out the SkyTrain. Boom. Just waiting to get on and uh, head downtown, so stay tuned. This is where we are right now. And we have to go all the way to here. It's gonna be a nice SkyTrain ride for sure. So enjoy the views. So, made it to stadium, safe and sound. It was a super quick SkyTrain ride. And the haircutting salon that I typically go to while I'm down here is a nice little hidden spot close to the supermarket. So yeah, it's literally a stone's throw away. Like it's beyond this uh, little walkway over here. So stay tuned and yeah, if you don't already know, Stadium Chinatown, this is where the hugest population of Asian Canadians were housed during the time they let Asians come into Canada for the first time. So it's pretty cool. It's kind of historic in the sense that they had like a community here, but there was like a riot and the whole segment burned down. Oh wow, that's so new, uh, but yeah gonna quickly but yeah this area is pretty like historic um, it's got some parts there's like some cobblestone roads and just in this area in general it's very nice and chilled and yeah I mean like before is like way worse. I would say like back in like 2010s, like I don't know, 11 years ago, it was kind of rough. Like you would hold on to your bag like really tight uh, just because of the amount of like uh, 
social problems that they were having over here. Yeah, uh, haircutting barber shop is just down over here. Gonna go there right now. It's gonna be like another five minutes, so stay tuned. Oh man, so I just went to the spot that I've been to twice so far and it's so busy today. I don't know why, but they're fully booked. So I'm just gonna randomly walk around to see if there's a haircutting spot close by and uh, get a haircut because this thing is just unmanageable, honestly. So stay tuned. You know what guys, I decided to scrap the whole idea in its entirety just because I know that place I went to last time they're okay with filming so I don't want to risk going to like a spa getting a haircut and not being able to film it. I know I'm very uh, picky in that sense but it is what it is so I'm just gonna go to the restaurant that I was intending to go to and maybe see what else is on the agenda for today. But yeah, I mean like, check out these views of this part of Gastown Main Street here. But yeah, stay tuned. So I'm at a Zakushi right now, Japanese Yakitori. So I booked a Rezo for 5.45, but let's see if they can accommodate for earlier. So let's just uh, walk up. Yes. So they were willing to accommodate early. Thank you. It's been a while since I've been here, but uh, so nice advertisement here. And uh, it's like any other restaurant, honestly. The vibes are pretty cool. And uh, this is the order sheet. So I'm gonna take a look at the menu real quick and uh, just go to town on this and I'll come back. So this is pretty cool. They have like the menus here, some drinking, the regular menu that I'm used to seeing. Oh, and they have some sashimi as well, nice. So, gonna take a look at this menu real quick, order up, and uh, we'll go from there, stay tuned. Alrighty guys, welcome back. So, after taking a look at the menu for quite some time, I ended up getting the premium set. So, ribeye, wagyu, sukume, premium beef tongue, duck breast, organic chicken thigh, I ended up getting two of these uh, garlic stubs wrapped with pork and two beef with daikon on top. I was leaning, I was thinking of getting liver, but liver, I'm not really down with that, so stay tuned. I'm gonna just sit tight and chill. But yeah, it seems like it's very relaxed here. Uh, they have like the setup here with the menus and they also have like something to do with like frozen ramen too. So it's a first for me to hear frozen ramen, so that's kind of interesting. But um, yeah, we'll just sit tight and wait and see. Kind of, I've been here like total two, three times. And uh, every time I come here, the experience is pretty solid. The staff is very joyous and uh, the food is very different from just flash frying the food, like in a pan. They use that charcoal like grill and it takes like five to 15 minutes or something like that so it's pretty cool and uh, it has that nice authentic flavor if you've ever watched any like shows in North America 
there is a show called King of the Hill. So it's created by Mike Judge. So it's kind of like that realm of、uh, Futurama, Simpsons, that kind of echelon of like cartoon show. And King of the Hill itself, like it's the most American show depicting like Southern lifestyle, where it's just like typical middle class family,、uh, suburban in Arlington, Texas. And、uh, one of the main characters, where the show is based out of his family.、Um, His name is Hank Hill, and he sells propane and propane accessories. And he's huge on like really neat, but he's got a huge、uh, pain for like charcoal,、uh, just because it's not like a clean burning fire. But yeah, like for this spot,、uh, they have charcoal, so it has that nice charred flavor. So we're gonna see what's up for that. But on the menu for sure,、um, I think so. Five is in the premium set. And then two and two, so that's obviously nine, nine skewers. So I'm probably not gonna get filled from that. Honestly, I'm just gonna use this as a balancing off point to go from one spot to the next. So stay tuned. And、uh, yeah, it's not just meat as well. Like of the beef and pork variety, they also have like sashimi, and they also have vegetables too. But I'm obviously not gonna offer the vegetables just because I prefer getting something that I can't make at home. And、uh, the sashimi, I'll probably just go to a sushi spot afterwards. But yeah, stay tuned, stay tuned. And they dropped off some water. So wait for that. Stay tuned. And they also have this、uh, little cup here. I don't know how clean that is, but、uh, that's for the leftover skewers when you're done. Like you just stack it up rather than just leaving it on the plate. So stay tuned. Enough of me rambling, and we're gonna dive into the food shortly. Take this mask off. So I have like a memory, like a fish, honestly. But some skewers have arrived. So. This right here is the garlic stubs with pork or jumbo memaki. Nice thin roll of pork here with the garlic stubs. Ah,、uh, here we have the Dakushi Premium Set. From here, Wagyu beef chicken and free range organic chicken. And premium beef tongue, duck breast, and the ribeye. Thank you again. And another、uh, set of skewers have arrived. So, so. It's all very fragrant. It smells very delicious. So actually, I'm gonna do something kind of. Far left field. I'm actually gonna pause this, take some video. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So ended up getting premium set、uh, the pork with garlic stubs and beef with、uh, daikon on top. So looks very delicious. I'm starving. So gonna go with one that I know for sure is delicious. Cheers, guys, and hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy. The restaurant I'm at is at、uh, it's in the West End, but it's called Zakushi Boom Japanese Yakitori Spot. So nice glazing. Nice smoky flavor. It's like a mound of flavor here. When you're done with the square. Maybe I should finish this one. 
How they do park? They make it so thin. That it's not its usual toughness. I'm in love with these two so good. Took my finger dunk in some of the sauce here. So uh, gonna go for the premium set. This is the YU. The YU. This is the chicken. I believe this is chicken. Well, this could be duck breast, actually, just by judging how fatty this is. <laughs> duck breast for sure. I think this is... This might be the uh, beef tongue here. Judging by how thick this is. And this one is the chicken thigh. Nice and springy. Actually, this I think is the chicken thigh. This is the duck breast. This kind of tastes like duck. And this is the ribeye, 100%. So, there's like, I think a honey mustard and a wasabi sauce. The sauce is so amazing. I'm just gonna break burst through this just because it's not that much food. This kind of gives me ideas of I should make this. Save the single one, it's just so good. This one is so, so massively drenched with the uh, item on top here. some uh, chicken thigh once again. Texture is different. I honestly don't think the duck breast needs 
lemon just with how salty it is right now. Nice amount of fat about that. I don't know what this green sauce is, but it's so good. It's unheard of to put this much sauce on these. But let's do it anyways, guys. Maybe put some, uh, Radish wasabi. Tap it up with some more. <laughs> Premium sauce. The wagyu meatballs. They're just so smoky, and with that wasabi sauce, horseradish sauce, it just takes it to the next level. But I'm happy with the side skewers that I ended up getting, just because it had the right texture, it had the right flavor. Um, the premium set is pretty solid, you get like a mix of like a tender beef tongue, you get like a not as like a springy chicken thigh and you get like a fatty duck breast and the ribeye is just like a standard piece as well but um, premium set it's a must 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 but I feel like for the portion that you get like you're going for just like a melting pot of different like, skewers with charcoal flavor but thanks again for staying tuned Zakushi West End they have another location on Main Street Japanese yakitori, they have sashimi, they have like charred vegetables, they have like soups, and um, yeah, that's all for me, and let's go for the next restaurant, but I'll probably maybe end this video, just keep it separate, so stay tuned, and uh, that's all for me from uh, Zakushi. I think I'll be okay, can okay. I just get the invoice? Okay, sure. Bye for now. guys as you can tell from the uh hi don't you just love that inviting nature that uh, Japanese people have yeah every time you uh, 
go in, they greet you. Every time you leave, they greet you. But yeah, that was just like the whole process from them. Uh, the whole, like, the whole, their whole bread and butter literally is in the sense of the charcoal grill and doing the meats. I'm actually kind of surprised, honestly speaking, how they can like produce so many skewers. Like if you're, if you're the chef and you're like turning those, turning those, turning those, like they need to wear like gloves, honestly, just because it seems like it's probably one of those things where it would uh, hurt your fingers, to be honestly speaking. Like when I have like a convection oven or if I try to grab something super hot, like it radiates heat, not just like uh, in an upward fashion. It's like kind of a, I, I should press this button, honestly. It kind of radiates at like a outward motion. So when I saw the chef, honestly, uh, trying to do that, it was insane. So I'm gonna run for my bus, stay tuned. Alrighty guys, so teleported from the bus at Robson Square right now and I am going to a restaurant to get a burger. So I'm taking advice from a fellow food reviewer and I've been to the restaurant before. I had their paella, so it's kind of like Spanish rice with seafood and they actually are known for their burger so it's really really good but i'll be the judge of that uh walking scenes to that restaurant hopefully they have enough space for someone to sit down but i don't see how it can be too difficult just because it's one single person so stay tuned and check out this uh lighting situation here boom but yeah going to the restaurant right now they're known for their burger surprisingly enough but you can never be too hyped up on that just because it's like a western spot so stay tuned got this lighting on the tree like they got a bunch of these snowflake looking stars And you can tell from the background as well, there's like some green lighting at the hotel rooms. Uh, so that building over there with the green, that's a Hotel Georgia. And they kind of have like a presentation for lights as if it's a tree. That's cool. But yeah, I'm gonna go to the restaurant, stay tuned. Alrighty guys, so just walking there now, it's on like Richards, something like that. Like I said, I've been to that restaurant before. It's very cool interior. It has really high ceilings and the vibe there at the restaurant is unmatched. The bar, it has like a nice woody texture and just the decor. It seems like it's something from the 1800s where like you're kind of invited into the king's uh, armory and you're just kind of shooting the ish and just going for drinks. So yeah, probably just gonna continue walking there. Like I said, the spot is pretty cool. And I mean like, maybe we'll have a seat on the inside. Last time I ate on the outside, it was kind of a little chilly, but they had like space heaters. Um, Maybe they'll have live music, who knows? We'll see what's up. Uh, just almost there. I think it's around this bend over here. And uh, yeah, famous burger. I knew the skewers weren't gonna be filling from the other spot, but that's just the nature of being like a food reviewer where you go for the experience, you go for the taste, you don't go for the volume. So, but yeah. I think this is January 3rd, so three days into the new year. I actually had a resolution, surprisingly enough, to eat less. <laughs> but it's not really shaping out to be that great because I've already had like five burgers and 
I've also had eight pieces of fried chicken and I've just had like skewers and I'm going for a big giant burger so we'll see how this turns out but stay along for the journey and continue on with the ride. Oh there's some sirens. Stay tuned. More bike lanes, more bike lanes. Just what Vancouver needs. We have a traffic problem already and they're installing more bike lanes. Alrighty guys, so uh, the restaurant's right in front of me. Per se, social corner. Outside looks kind of very uh, happening for sure so gonna walk up see what's up and hopefully they have a spot for me most likely they do just based off the uh, seating on the outside so sit tight look at this uh, interior guys yeah, I was like, this motherfucker doesn't hate me. Everything's a lot of shit. Alrighty guys, have taken a seat here. So, it's like every other restaurant these days. You scan this QR code, menus come up, boom. And I'm gonna quickly find that delicious burger that was recommended to me and I'm gonna order that up get some sparkling water and just see where the night takes me so let's see here. hopefully they didn't remove it ah yes here so literally the burger right here boom uh, 8 ounce in-house hand ground blue goose organic beef blue goose organic beef I guess it's just beef to jazz up the name fresh chala bun melted fontina cheese truffy aioli and syrah caramelized onions sounds delicious gonna go for that and I was actually recommended uh, by the server last time and also someone else how you doing? Getting you? Good. Uh, can I get sparkling water? Sure. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. And I actually know what I'm gonna order. Sure. Uh, can I get the uh, the burger? <laughs> yeah. You call it that. For sure. Uh, is it better with bacon, you'd say, or? Uh, I mean, on its own, because because it's such a high-grade uh, piece of beef, I would say it's good on its own with the bacon. It's really good as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's up to you. Okay. Um, maybe I'll I'll just get it on its own. Sure. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Uh, do you want some fries, truffle fries, salad with it? I guess I'll get with uh, truffle fries. Sounds good. Yeah, and uh, I think that's everything for today. Perfect, sounds good. Awesome, appreciate it. Anyways, uh, just ordered up like that, so that's excellent. And I ended up getting some sparkling water. So, uh, come along for the journey, guys. Stay tuned. The burger is coming. Very high grade. I didn't get it with bacon. Maybe I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot afterwards. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, high expectations in my head. Just wait on. It. Stay tuned. Alrighty, guys. Yo, what up? So, just got this. Literally titled the burger. So the ingredients on this bad boy, as I said before, 8 ounce in-house hand, hand ground blue goose organic beef, such a hectic name there, a fresh chala bun, melted fontina cheese, truffle aioli, and syrah caramelized onions, 
sounds super delicious, very sublime, and truffle fries on the side here, and uh, some cauliflower. I don't know, I've never seen this kind of cauliflower before, it's like red like this, but uh, it's all good. So, got some uh, cutlery here. Probably not gonna utilize it, honestly. Just gonna put this on my lap right here. But the vibe in this restaurant is unmatched. Anyways, take off this. Don't wanna have a little hazard here. It's like a huge burger compared to my hand. It's like bigger than my fist, honestly. Okay. Cheers, first bite. Wow. It's so super messy. But it has that nice smoky flavor in it. The burger, it's cooked rare. You see how pink that is? It has a lot of give to it. It's not super firm. And then you got like the come up. Caramelized onions that kind of give it that crunchy note. It's pretty good. I'm just making an absolute mess right here. Look at my hands. When it comes to this burger, I've had my fair share of good burgers, but this one is pretty different just because I've never had some patty as super rare like this. Um, Try some of these fries here. Wow, it's so crispy. In terms of truffle fries, this is probably second on my list. There's this one spot in Portland. It's a part of like a brewery, Deschutes Brewery. Those truffle fries are probably like just Portland in general, like the food hub there is just like so unmatched, like for food, uh, the beer scene. But I'm actually quite surprised with this beer though. It's super messy. Don't come here to <clears throat> get this and try to eat it in a clean way because how I'm devouring this like look at my hands honestly stay tuned I'm gonna continue eating this. I don't want this to be filled with too much of the eating. I'll come back for a recap. Stay tuned. Guys, yeah, back. So initially, when the food came on, it was like on a cutting board, kind of like platter style. It seems like this is how they serve the food to you, like whether it be the burgers. I remember getting charcuterie here before, also kind of like on a wood cutting board. How they presented the burger with the truffle fries 
uh, they have like an option between salad, fries, regular fries, uh, truffle fries. But they wrap the truffle fries in like this newspaper kind of print. And they also had some pickled like vegetables, like uh, cauliflower and like uh, pickles, obviously. In the middle portion, and it's just like a no frills, no gimmick kind of burger where the burger was like medium rare. There's crispy like onions or like shallots or something like that. Whereas like nice crispiness, and then the bun was so buttery that normally when you eat a burger as back, so as back, so initially when the food came on. It was like on a cutting board, kind of like platter style. It seems like this is how they serve the food to you, like whether it be the burgers. I remember getting charcuterie here before, also kind of like on a wood cutting board. How they presented the burger with the truffle fries. Uh, they have like an option between salad, fries, regular fries, uh, truffle fries. But they wrap the truffle fries in like this newspaper kind of print. And they also had some pickled like vegetables, like uh, cauliflower and like, uh, pickles, obviously, in the middle portion. And it's just like a no frills, no gimmick kind of burger, where the burger was like medium rare. There's crispy like onions or like shallots or something like that. Whereas like nice crispiness, and then the bun was so buttery that. Normally when you eat a burger, what goes on to happen is like either they have a nice char to it or it's too, like, I don't want to say overcooked, but it's firm. But this, the texture was on point. I need a drink to get myself on track. But yeah, overall, probably top two burgers I've eaten in my life. Um, I would actually probably say the burger challenge that I've created, that was probably up there too. It's just this, like it's so unique, it's so different that you gotta try it once. I would honestly say that. that